What's up, everybody? It's your girl, Candy Kane. Thank you for chilling with me tonight. I am so honored to have this beautiful brown queen in the building with me today. I have known her for several years now, um, and she just amazes me as has she has blossomed um, into this beautiful flower that is a woman. And she has written a book. I've known her for her spoken word um, all these years, but she has finally been able to come to a place of healing where she has decided to let us in into some of those dark places and shown us how she has come to the light. So we will talk about her book today called These Dry Bones. And that young lady to the right of me is Miss Esty Marie. Hey, girl! <laughs> <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome to the Touch the World radio show. Thank you. I am so honored that you uh, decided to share this space with me today. Um, I'm honored to be here. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. And we thank Lady Eva J for giving us the space to come in here and to be free and to be ourselves, you guys, you know. So Miss Esty is going to pray us in today. So Miss Esty, come on, girl. All right. So, Father, we just thank you for this space, Lord. We thank you for today. We thank you for life, health, and strength. I just yes. ask right now that um, those tuning in would hear that which you need them to hear on today, yes. that something would be said that would um, bring your light into their life, Lord. Um, and I just pray that um, it be a great show with no interferences in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 <laughs> so let me show you guys a cover of the book. I can't tell if it's on there to show up in a minute. But this is the cover of her book. Is that there? Oh, wait, let me go down. There we go. Oh. Let me back up. And go <laughs> that way. There we go. <laughs> That's her book, y'all, These Dry Bones, and that is taken from Ezekiel 37, 3 through 4. Um, so if you don't know that story in the Bible with the prophet Ezekiel, go look it up. How about that? <laughs> Read the book. <laughs> Very enlightening. Um, so, Miss Esty, we're going to take a dive into your personal space since you have opened it up to the world. I have. You have. I have. Um, <laughs> So we're going to talk about that, and I think that it will bring some healing for some people who, who have some bones that need to be wakened up and brought back to life, and, mm -hmm. and maybe they will take a page from your book and uh, get some healing themselves. So I'm, 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 I'm ready to hear all of that. But before we do that, you guys, we're going to take a couple of commercial breaks, and we'll be right back to the Touch the World radio show. Stay tuned. Bring your youth, family, friends to Hip Hop Church LA Outreach Ministry. We have services on the third Sundays during the months of February, April, June, August, October, and December. We have artists who come and minister in rap, crump and praise dance, singers, and spoken word. Gigi Sweet is our DJ who keeps the praise party rocking. Service begin at 5 p.m. For more information, you can go to hiphopchurchla.org, call us at 323-557-3803, or email info at hiphopchurchla.org. You can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And always remember, don't get it twisted, God has always existed. Shinwear, God's clothing, a new blazing flammable Christian line, ready to shine with bright colors, characteristic, current popular trend, honoring of God's name Shin, with style and fashion, go and get at www.shinwear.online, blessings and miracles. Hey family, this is Lady Eva J. I wanted to take this time to have a serious conversation with you. I have been given a new assignment to touch the world in a different way. Our lives have all been shifted in this recent pandemic and we have lost family, friends, and loved ones. Here's the hard part. No one wants to talk about being insured. Well, my new assignment is to educate families on how to financially invest in themselves while also making sure they're covered correctly when God calls them home. Do you have life insurance? Do you know what you really have? Are you sure you're covered in the correct way? Have you invested so you don't have to pay life insurance your whole life? Yes, I said your whole life. 
Well, let's talk about it. Let's make sure our families don't have to find money to lay us to rest. Call me at 323-494-9585. Once again, that's 323-942-9585. And let's have a brief conversation about it. After all, I'm here to serve you. This is Lady Eva J, and I'm out. Hey, Tony. This is Angela. I want to be closer to you. I called you, you answered, and told me to come a little closer. Radio show. It's your girl Candy Kane, and I'm in the building today with Miss E. Dot Marie, Esty Marie, uh, <laughs> Esty the poet, however you want to call her. She is here in the building today, y'all. Okay. So look, let me put this out here. We do. She had we have a request line here. If you would like to call in and talk to her, um, our phone number here is 310-910-9676. That's 310-910-9676 extension one so y'all share 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 if you're watching me out there on facebook you guys share 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 tell everyone to tune in so we can talk about these dry bones <laughs> so miss esty yeah, yeah. once again let me say how how proud i am of you Thank you. I'm so proud thank of you. you. So, I have so proud. to say thank you to Lady Eva J. Yes. Because, listen, when I was just getting into this spoken word thing, she always gave me a platform, gave me opportunity to share my poetry. Yes. So, yes. thank you, thank you, Eva. I love you. <laughs> thank you. Yes, indeed, Lady Eva J. Yes, 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 yes. So, 
Um, these dry bones came out, what, two months ago? Yes. About two months ago. Um, I bought my book because I always like to support our young people and what they do. Um, Essie has been to Hip Hop Church several times um, and shared her spoken word at Hip Hop Church L.A., um, and we value her ministry that she has. She is a teacher. <laughs> God, bless her. God bless her. God bless her. Middle school. <laughs> Love the kids. Lord Jesus. First it was elementary, right? Uh, no, I've been in no, middle school. No, at Watson, I said it was still middle school. I was at the middle school. You were at the middle school. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Ooh, that's a rough age with middle school. Yeah, but I love them. Crazy, we got, we got a lot of kids. We got a lot of kids. Okay, so Essie, um, who are you? Ooh, who am I? Mm-hmm. I am a multidisciplinary artist who loves people and loves just sharing what I have in hopes that it will help somebody else. There you go. There <laughs> you go. So, who were you? To get to the point that where you had to start writing poetry. I was a very angry, functioning, depressed child. Mm. Um, I hid it well. I didn't let, really let my parents know what was going on with me. Um, I was a straight A student, um, but I was really upset. And in eighth grade, at Grace Yokely Middle School, I took a creative writing class, and I feel like it just opened up my world. Mm. Um, I'd always been good at writing. Uh, my mom tells me when I was in kindergarten, I like won an award for some story that I wrote. Really? Yeah. So wow. Um, I've always been um, writing, and I think it's in my blood. My my father wrote a book okay <laughs> and, um, that was just your gift god yeah, gave you yeah and um i think it just that creative writing class showed me a way to express what i couldn't verbalize like okay. i had the words for it mm-hmm. i just couldn't verbalize it to anyone okay. so um i started writing i started journaling i always was walking around with a notebook and um and a pen and I would just write, I would write. And uh, I felt like that was the safest place because I really didn't know who I could trust. Okay. So my my notebook was the one person I knew wouldn't tell my secrets. Okay. So. Okay. So that was I get the place that. where I felt safe. <laughs> so within this creative writing class, um, were you selective on what you chose to share? Um. I, yes, I was. I didn't really write about um, really personal things. Or if I did, I did it in such a way that mm. no one would question or anything like that. Because, I mean... You masked it. Yeah. Uh-huh. I, I, I knew that I needed to present someone that was okay. Because in my mind, that's just what had to happen. I had to be okay for everybody and how did you get to the point at an early age that you had to be okay for everybody else where did that come from you know i'm i'm not 100 percent sure i'm i am an older sibling so i do have younger siblings and maybe it it comes from that just needing to protect and having this desire to protect and i think because of the things that i experienced um and not wanting to get in trouble okay for the things that i experienced i would just act like everything was fine okay (laughs) okay so at what age let's let's go back then so at what age um or at what um incident shall i say that started you on this path of I gotta be just be okay. I can't say nothing. Um, I think it was when I was told by the person who was doing things inappropriately to me that no one would believe me and it was gonna be my fault. Wow. So at that point, 
I was just like, okay, well, I don't want to get in trouble. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't need to be in trouble for anything. So I'm just going to act like this isn't happening. And at what age were you? I was eight or nine, somewhere around there. Okay. And, and had that been, had there been a conversation with your parents where you felt what that person told you overrode what they said. Did you have did you have a conversation or were your parents those parents that said come to me and talk to me about anything? Uh, not necessarily. They didn't push away from that, but it was never said. So because it was mm -hmm. never said, I didn't know that that was a door that you could walk into. Yeah, it it, it wasn't clear. I totally In get it. <laughs> I, I, I totally get it. We, you have parents then, as we're because we're older now, and now parents as new parents, we do different stuff. As we try to talk to our kids back then, they didn't have the. Not all parents had those conversations. Yeah. Yeah. So it just the conversations never came up. Most of our conversations were about education, so I knew, okay. and that's where, you know, I knew straight A's, get get those grades, do what I got to do, mm -hmm. and that's where my focus was. So okay. I, I dove even deeper into just excelling in school and making sure that I made the honor roll every year. Wow. Just making sure that that happened all the time. Education was the key. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So within that, from that incident, was it a thing that it was constant where you had to, you constantly had this turmoil inside of you of saying, do I tell, do I don't, do I not tell? Well, no, I can't tell because yeah, he said, I'm going to be in trouble and I don't want to be in trouble because I got to do what my parents do and get my education. So I got to be the straight A student. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Was there ever any kind of lull in there where you said, well, maybe I can tell. I didn't come to that realization until I was much older. Mm. Yeah, when I when I was much older, like college, that's when I finally really? opened up and told my parents what happened. I was in college. That says a lot of how we take things and we we store them up like little uh like little squirrels getting ready for the winter we pack take all those little nuggets <laughs> and those nuts and, and you know how they store them up for when you need them mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying and and, that, and i can just speak that as for myself as little things happen and you just didn't have a safe place to to tell anybody or you, you didn't know that you could tell somebody you kind of just like pack that stuff away yeah so from that instance were there more instances of something different? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, there were. Um, and it was just a very... It does something to your mind as a child when mm. you're seeing this person and this person is in your space. And, I mean, he was a friend of my older brother's. So it's okay. like the family trust this person i'm supposed to trust this person um and then there we are and this thing is happening but then there's another person who's attempting to hurt me and then he stops this person from hurting me so then it's just like what i i guess you're a safe place to be like <laughs> right like how do i <laughs> i'm trying to process all of this at like 10. So this is just a year later. Yeah. So this is all that's happening. And then I was very, um, I didn't really want to be in relationships or things like that after that. Cause it was just, that was too much for yeah. a 10 year old. So you have this one abuser, but then here comes another one that is also now abusing you, but then saves you from the, first abuser so in your mind do you do you have a sense of loyalty to this person now because he saved you from something that could have been worse than what it was i i believe there was some inkling of he's okay mm. because he helped me mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and did he use that to his advantage like throw it up in your face no 
Interesting. Now, was now what is the age range from the first person? Um, what was the age difference? From eight until eleven, and then I moved when I was eleven, so that I was away. So you were away from both of them. Yep. And how old were they? They were older, so I think one of them was like maybe. 13, 15, some, somewhere. Okay. Somewhere just line. a few years older. Yeah, a few than, years older. Just a few years older, so they were yeah. still within a child of themselves. Right. So, it, it, hormones, people figuring stuff out. Yes. You know, boys not really knowing what to do with all of that. And... Do you think there was some uh, molestation in their life? M- most likely. I, I would assume so, because, I mean, studies show that typically... Those who do have had it happen to them. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. Um, I, I would think that that probably happened to them. Wow. If you, have you ever confronted them? Nope. I moved away. That was it. Oh, and you've never seen them again? Nope. Really? If the, the chan- If it presented itself, would you speak to them? Um... I probably would just to say I forgive you because I, mm. I don't I don't hold anything against them at this yeah. point. Yeah, just for your own healing. Maybe for theirs. I'm I'm okay. Hey, <laughs> but, you know I don't know what they're. I have no idea what they are going through. Yeah. So <laughs> I like that for their healing because you healed. Yeah. I'm okay. <laughs> she healed, y'all. Did you hear her? <laughs> she says she's healed. I'm okay. Wow. Okay. So now we've moved. Now at eleven. Now we're we've moved. Yes. So before we move, read. Do you have some poetry that reflects that time period that you want to read for the people from before I moved? Yeah, or just um, in that time frame. Yeah, so okay. the way the book is set up, it, it kind of goes through that whole transition process. So okay. You'll see here. I will Okay, read. wait a minute. Before you read, tell them a little bit, because I already know. I read the book, y'all. So, <laughs> <laughs> so tell them about the seven sections and how it breaks up and how that it flows. So as you read your poetry and we discuss. Okay. Okay. So the way the book is set up, the book is inspired by um, Ezekiel 37, um, the story of the Valley of the Dry Bones. Mm -hmm. And in this passage, the Lord speaks to his prophet and he asks him a question. He said, can these dry bones live again? And Ezekiel, in sarcastic fashion, is like, Lord, you know you God. Like, why are you asking me? You already know the answer to this question. Like, why, why are we even going here? Um, but within that chapter, you see these different sections where the bones are just lifeless and they're there. And then God has Ezekiel speak to the bones Mm. and then they come together Mm. and they're not all the way, you know, alive, but they, they formed and now they have a a skeleton. The Mm -hmm. bones have connected and then we get to the place where the sinews and the muscles and everything develop. And then life gets breathed into these bones. Mm. And as I was studying that, the Lord told me that those bones for me represented my dreams. Mm. Everything that I had given up on or made excuses for that I couldn't do, that I talked myself out of, self-sabotage. Um, <laughs> I talk myself out of a lot of things, um, but, uh, you're not in a boat by yourself, <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, there's a lot of people that do that. And, um, it just comes from these negative thoughts that we have in our head. And I was able to come to terms with that and realize that, okay, if you say I can do it, Lord, I'm I'm going to go ahead. And um, putting this book together represents that. Mm-hmm. It, it's a representation of me not giving up, me pushing forward, believing in that breath and, and taking those steps. And um, I'm excited <laughs> that we are here now. Yes. Um, it, it's been a journey, um, but it's well worth it. So... I'm just, I'm glad that I was able to, to 
face all the different layers of things yes. that were going on with me. Cause I, I had very low self-esteem, even though it wasn't visible to most people. Most people would look at me and think that I was okay, but that's because, you know, the masquerade, we, we put on mm -hmm. these masks for people and we do what we got to do, um, in our heads. And, um, I'm just glad that period of my life is over. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So share a poem with us, if you will. Okay. So this is from the Taken to the Valley section, and this is called Things Hidden. You don't want me. Oh, sorry. You don't want me to know, but I see things hidden. Deep down, I know what lies beneath. You can't hold it forever. Your guilt eats up your insides. To the point where you want to break down and cry. Mm. I see things hidden that you don't want me to know. It's too bad how your actions let it show. Don't think you can make it better by saying those three little words. Because if I took them away, then what would you say? Your secrets and lies kill you inside. You let on like it's cool, but I know it's killing you. You're talking in your sleep while you're lying next to me. Mm. I see the things hidden. No secrets, no lies. Was that a poem that you wrote to yourself? And what would be the three little words? I love you. Ah. I love you. Mm -hmm. That's kind of hard to say to yourself when you feel broken and damaged. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and what a symbolism to uh, be lying in bed but can see. You have the visual of you seeing yourself lying in, in the bed as you look. I, I saw, as I read it, I saw the visualization of I can see myself sleep in my bed. And as I'm watching over myself saying, Candace, what have you gotten yourself into? You know, why is all of this happening to you? How are you going to make it better? What are you going to do? Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. Yeah, that speaks volumes. It speaks volumes, most definitely. Mm, I appreciate that. <laughs> I appreciate that because I think, you, um, as you will find, and you have probably already heard from people that have bought in your book and probably have had heard your poetry, that you speak for a lot of people that, like me, I'm not that creative, writer person. I, I that, that ain't my gift. <laughs> I'm just going to say, that ain't my gift. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But the words that you put on this printed piece of paper now gives uh, my little Candace a voice, shall I say. Yes. And, yeah. and that that was the the inspiration that kind of kept me to, to keep going. Because if you would have asked me, I never would have envisioned myself as a public speaker because mm -hmm. of so many things that I had against myself. I didn't like my voice. I felt like my voice was too deep for a girl. So I didn't like talking. Wow. Um, I was more into dancing. I was okay. on the dance team and all that because I didn't have to talk. Mm -hmm. I could still express myself creatively without having to use my voice. Mm -hmm. But my voice is the very thing that God wanted to use because I felt like I couldn't use it. And it, it just kind of reminded me of like Moses and how he didn't want to talk because he had a speech impediment. Yes. And he was like, ah, eh, but like, God, you know, come on now. Not me. Really? Your weaknesses. Oh, girl. <laughs> Lord Jesus. <laughs> I, oh, my God. I, I felt like speaking was a weakness. But yeah. It was my strength, apparently. <laughs> I just didn't know. You just didn't know. But I now didn't. you know. <laughs> and I think that's why that's the thing that was attacked at such an early age because I, I, I wouldn't talk about it. Like, mm -hmm. but what kind of gave me an epiphany i used to have like blogs and different things and i would put some of my poems up on blogs and someone left a comment on the poem that you want me to end with okay um and they said on on that post um they said this is exactly how i've been feeling and i didn't have the words for it there you have it and in that moment I realized that there's more to this writing thing than just bringing healing to myself. Because for me, it was just, 
it was like my therapy because mm-hmm. I wasn't really talking to anybody. So I was just like, okay, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to write it out. Mm-hmm. And I knew that after I wrote, I would feel better. So mm-hmm. that's why I just kept writing for me. But when I realized I can help other people with my writing, that's what had me just keep going. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. <laughs> We're letting her, uh, letting her know <laughs> that we needed her all along. But look here, you guys. We're gonna take a small break. We are going to play a song called "Ooh We," another blessing by Smith and the Sons of Jericho, and we will be right back to the Touch the World Radio Show with more with SD Marie. <laughs> Stay tuned, you guys. We'll be right back.
every time that I turn around, he's blessing my family. When I look around, I can see my mama sitting there. She brought me from a baby all the way to a grown man. And I've never seen the righteous, never seen it for second no. All right, you guys, welcome back to the Touch the World radio show. It's your girl, Candy Kane. I'm in the building today with E. Marie. You guys talking about those dry bones. But you guys just got through listening to uh, Smith and Sons of Jericho. They are birthed straight out of the city of Compton, 2020. This is a collective group of singers, writers, and musicians from a variety of musical genres. This is their first single, Ooh Wee, Another Blessing, featuring Rev and Bertrand. Tran Bailey Jr., born in Dallas, Texas. Um, look, you guys, you can get this everywhere, okay? Because it dropped today, 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 today. So y'all picked that up. Me and Miss Marie over here was talking, and we was like, this is a cha-cha song. This is a skating song. Yep. This is just a good old song right here, y'all. So I would advise y'all to go out and get, ooh-wee. Another blessing by Smith and the Sons of Jericho. Right here from Compton, y'all. Let's support our home team, y'all. Yes. Support, support, support. Okay? All right, so, Miss Esty. Yes. Okay, so now that we are moved from the building of the first two perpetrators. So now at this time, that's the 11. So you're going... That's the end of elementary school now going into junior high. Mm -hmm. Now we get to where we get to this creative writing class mm -hmm. and uh, things start to open up for you. But as they open up for you creatively and give you a venting space, does that change how you see yourself? And does that change predators from coming your way? It doesn't necessarily change how I saw myself, I don't think, because I really didn't know how to look at myself at that point. I just, I didn't really like what I saw. Um, I liked being creative. I liked expressing myself. So I made sure that, you know, I, I played sports. I was on the dance team. Choir. Like, I would do all these creative things, um, and there were older boys that liked me. I developed early, so, you know. Okay. Um, I had a bit of a body, and <laughs> people didn't believe I was as old as I was. Like, I would go to the mall, and I would have to, like, show guys my ID. Like, I'm a child. You, you can't talk to me, like. It was bad. Really? Yeah, like grown men. Like, I'm a child. I would show my school ID. Like, mm -mm, don't want to talk to me. I'm a child. Did like, that no. Did that deter them? Not really. <laughs> Perverts. Not really. <laughs> right. I'm just like, ah, this world is, they need help. They need Jesus. Yeah. We all, we all yeah, need a little bit yeah, of Jesus. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, um. Yeah, that didn't, that didn't deter them, really. And so um, I was in this, like, strange place because I really didn't know how to look at myself. Mm -hmm. And then as I got older, um, being one of the few people who look like me, you know, a lot of black girls go through that and... In, in school, if you don't go to a school that's predominantly African-American, and then okay. you're like one of the only people who look like you in your classroom. So mm -hmm. there's all these just things going on. And then you're in the, you're like in dance, but then I didn't have 180 turnout like the rest of the girls. And you know, there's just all these things where it's like, I'm here, I'm trying to take up space, but then constantly comparing myself to other people. Okay. So there was this constant comparison going on. So I didn't really like, myself mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, 
I can, I understand all I can I can understand and I think a lot of us can as we grow older and now we're at this awkward stage and now our bodies are doing things that okay they told us it's natural to happen but now I'm getting this unwanted attention mm-hmm. and they don't seem to care that I'm 12 or 13 and they are 20 something years old it's right. it's like then at this point do you now see that people only want you for your body. They want you at school for dance. Men want your body for other things. How did you value your body? I didn't. So what type of, because you didn't value your your body, what kind of uh, behavior did that lead into, or did it not? Did it close you off, or did it kind of open you up to things? It was a, a little bit of both. Um... I was closed off in a sense where I would wear really baggy clothes, like size 40 jeans. (laughs) Really? Size 40. That was my number. I would buy size 40 jeans. And mind you, I was nowhere near size 40. I was an athletic child. So, I mean, you know... (sighs) a little extra pounds right now but (laughs) it's all right it's all right girl um, i I was a athletic child and i had no business in a size 40 i had no business yeah no what did your parents think when you were buying these oversized clothes did they think that was just a trend uh a little bit you know Aaliyah helped with that okay you know Aaliyah with you know the big jeans and then Uh you know the little top so um that whole trend helped but my mom always has something to say like why are you dressing like this <laughs> she just she was not a fan um, she wasn't a fan no of it. she was not a fan at all um but you know i just i was trying to kind of cover up and i figured maybe that would help um but then at the same time you know i was doing little things that i didn't have no business doing with a uh, person who lived across the street, uh, so I, you know, I, I, it was I was in this like toss up of I didn't I really didn't know what to do with myself, and so you know, it I went through the the stage that most you know kids go through. Okay, and I remember, <laughs> oh my gosh, I remember my dad had a conversation with me because he found a note. Uh oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh-oh. found a note and then we had a talk and then I was like okay I need to get this I need to get this in control <laughs> um, cause uh can't, I can't be getting caught up like this <laughs> so <laughs> but um yeah that, yeah. That, yeah yeah so, so now the things that you are in with your body you're voluntarily doing it at, at that point yeah it was and that, more and that, can we say that stems from not having any value? I definitely, definitely. So now, and we're still the straight A student. Yep. We still have on this facade that I'm okay. Mm-hmm. I'm okay. You okay? Yep. Okay. So now we we go through junior high school. We now come into high school. Now we graduate and we're in college. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I read in your book that somewhere in there, there was a, a, a lull in there where the creative writing had stopped. Yeah, I just, I stopped writing. I didn't do any type of writing what, at all. What, what was that about? I think I was just, mentally I was exhausted mm. and I didn't want to, to really think of a creative way to say what I was feeling. Okay. And I didn't want to just say it outright either. So okay. just eh, focus on other things. Wow. Okay. I'm shocked by that. Cause I, I get, I, I, I guess because th- this was such an outlet for you that you kind of just was just so mentally tired. Was it a thing of, I'm just so mentally tired of going through and talking about it with myself that I just, I'm just going to ignore that. I think it was a, kind of like an escapism. Like, maybe if Mm. I just don't deal with it at all, it will go away. Okay, like me and food. (laughs) I didn't have have that creative outlet. I didn't have dance. I didn't have that. All I had was food. That was my safe place. 
You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So it didn't talk back to me. It didn't tell me I was ugly. It didn't tell me I was fat. It did, you know, anything that I did wrong, it just, it was my comfort zone. So I, I, I kind of get that where you just like, okay, I, I, I don't even want to deal with it. So let me ignore it. So now we get to the end of college and now the floodgate is back open. Yeah. Uh-huh. What caused that to open back up? Um, my best friend invited me to church. <laughs> okay. Because, I mean, you know, I, I grew up, we had prayer meetings at our house and just always, you know, constantly in prayer um, with family, but then I got to college, and I was like, I'm free! <laughs> so we was on the party scene? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Every weekend. Man, Wednesday through Sunday, I was I was out there just living my best life. So, so I you thought. thought. So I thought. So you thought. Yeah. So you thought. <laughs> I was partying hard. Oh my goodness. Um, <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Hard. Um yeah. So you go to then, church? Yeah, I ended up going to church and realizing like, okay, I need to get this together a little bit. And my relationship with the Lord, I started to actually like hear his voice again and okay. um I, the desire came back, so I okay. just I started writing again. You started writing again. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's it. Still wasn't for public consumption, though. I, yeah. I I didn't think it was anyway. Yeah. Um, but someone was putting on an event, and <laughs> they were putting on an event. James. James was putting on an okay. event. Okay. Okay. And he needed somebody. Somebody dropped out and was like, uh, he's like, I got a space. Can you read a poem? And I was like, mm, nah. And he's like, no, 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 just read a poem. And I was like, okay, fine. I'll read a poem. I read my little poem. Uh-huh. And I thought that was going to be the end of it. Uh-huh. But then Pastor Graham was there that day. Okay. I love Pastor Graham. I love him too. I love Pastor Graham. <laughs> yeah. He comes up to me afterwards and he goes, I need you to do this poem for my youth. Okay. And I'm looking at him like, no. No, dude, that wasn't what this that, was about. That, How long this was, five this minutes? was a okay. one-time thing. And then he goes, no, I'll do it. And my mouth says yes, <laughs> while my body is like, no, <laughs> no, we're not doing this. <laughs> um, but yes came out of my mouth. And um, that's kind of how the whole, like, it started back it again started for back real. Again. Yeah. But um, on but on a different pace. On, yeah, on a different, totally different level than even what I was expecting. Funny I, how I, God works, huh? Yeah. <laughs> definitely. Okay, so look, you have this poem called Quiet Storm, because we just have a few minutes left. Um I'm gonna read it. But then I want you to end it because when did you write Quiet Storm? Quiet Storm was written. Let's see, what section are we in? <laughs> this is... Quiet Storm, Breathless Bones Move. So Quiet Storm was written after college. Okay. But I still was not in... I wasn't, st- I wasn't healed. I wasn't okay. in a good place. Okay, so here we go, you guys. Quiet Storm. Hi. My name is Esty. I'm emotionally numb. I don't trust anyone. Sometimes I feel like screaming, but nothing ever comes out. All I want is to be okay. Hi, my name is Esty. My innocence was taken from me. Since then, I've always felt a bit strange. Then the ones closest to me cut the deepest wounds I have. And they don't let them heal. They keep cutting. But the blood doesn't show. Internally, I bleed. Hi, my name is Esty. All I feel is pain. Hi, my name is Esty. Inside my tears fall like rain. Hi, my name is Esty. And I'm so happy that I have found God. And he has given me mental peace. Yes, yes, yes. So, sis, come on. 
tell everybody because we're running out of time. Let everybody know how they can get your book and how because you're an artist as well. How they can get your 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 drawings and all that stuff. So yes. give them all the information. So everything can be found on my website. My website is e dot expression dot com. That's e d o t expression dot com. There you will see my book. You'll see this shirt. You'll see. Oh, show the shirt, chill them. Uh, yes, this actually comes from a poem that I wrote around Father's Day for our black men. What and does it so say? It says, dear black men, you are enough. Amen. You are enough. Yes, um, yes. Yeah, there's actually a sale happening right now. You ain't got to wait till Black Friday. 30% <laughs> off right now. Right now, right now, right now. Right now. Right so now. go to e.expression.com. E.expression, no S. E.expression.com. There you go. You guys support our girl. Get her book, These Dry Bones by E. Marie. Um, I love the pictures that you have in here. How you start with a skeletal face and as you go along, half is revealed. And then by the end, you have on this beautiful crown that I actually kind of want. So <laughs> Amazon, Amazon. I'm happy to go on Amazon because my birthday is coming. I need a crown for my birthday. So <laughs> look, you guys, thank you so much for tuning into the Touch the World Radio Show. I am your girl, Candy Kane, and I'm with E. Marie. E. Marie. I love her, y'all. I love, I love, I love her. So you guys support my sister. Support my sister. You got E. Marie. E. Dot expression. Dot com e.expression.com go and get your book today and anybody out there that has a school you a teacher or something holla at her about starting a program because I'm trying to get her to start one so she can help these kids out here with creative writing I'm just saying I'm working on it I'm working on it I've got a whole week Hey, right now, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> All right, you guys, we love y'all for free. For, for free. Thank you for tuning in to the Touch the World radio show. <laughs>